Hello, everybody. This is Joseph P. Farrell, and it is Thursday, July 26, 2012, in the year of the apocalypse. And uh, hasn't happened yet, but so far they appear to be working really hard on it. <laughs> so anyway, a couple quick announcements, and then I want to get to some commentaries. Um, first announcement is, for those of you who don't have access to Facebook, I did finish the sequel to Babylon's Banksters that is now at the publisher, uh, which will be Feral House. Um, I talked to Adam Parfrey, who owns Feral House, uh, shortly after sending it off to him. He indicated that he would not be able to expedite the um, publication. So look for that sequel to Babylon's Banksters to be out sometime within the year 2003, and I'm guessing that it will be between the spring and late summer at some point. So anyway, that book is out. The reason I wanted to mention that book is because it will actually fall in the order of how to read my books. It should fall before the book that I am now writing for Adventures Unlimited uh, Press, which is the sequel to Saucers, Swastikas, and Psyops. So I'm hoping um, to be able to put up an article or something on the website, on the Facebook page, updating the order to read the books. But anyway, the sequel to Babylon's Banksters is done, finally. Um, it will be very, very different from what most of you are probably expecting. Uh, there are conspiratorial aspects to the book, but uh, the real thrust of the book is in an entirely different direction. All right. The second announcement is tomorrow we do have our members vid chat, and uh, I've already got some <laughs> some really cool questions, so uh, I hope everybody will make it. All right, I wanted to talk about the Batman murders briefly because I, I've I've withheld commentary because I had at the point that they occurred the very, very dark suspicion that something was not right, especially in the stories, the way it was being reported. I didn't want to comment because, quite frankly, the families that lost loved ones or had loved ones wounded in, in that attack needed to have some time. But I also think that we need to have the truth. And the first and foremost thing that bothers me about this, folks, is the quickness with which the official story is already falling apart. And I'll get back to that point. I want you to notice something that strikes me as very odd. With this event, the alternative media, the independent journalist, is far outpacing. He's lapping the lamestream media. Almost as soon as the event happened, Alex Jones began to pick apart the official story. And very, very quickly, the rest of the alternative media followed suit. In other words, the story that is being cobbled together, and I, I use that expression advisedly, by the law enforcement agencies up there, by the government, by political commentators, by the lamestream media, that story is looking increasingly shaky. Now, I want you to consider the anomalies here. We've had witnesses state that it's, it, there are so many different stories, really, of how he got in there. And let's admit one very obvious fact here. I'm not aware, maybe some of you are, but in my reviews of the story, I'm not aware that anyone actually clearly saw Holmes. After all, he's in all sorts of gear. So this is the first problem. He's, he appears to me to be kind of like a Lee Harvey Oswald, kind of a patsy. And the reason that I'm suspicious of that is now that convenient discovery of a package that was supposed to have been delivered to a psychiatrist on the faculty of the University of Colorado at Anschutz. I, I prefer to call it Anschluss <laughs> because it appears that some sort of, of goal is at stake here in this operation. And I have no doubt in my mind, folks, that what we're looking at in the Batman murders is an operation of some sort. 
and I'll explain what I think it is in a few seconds. Then we have Holmes' strange behavior. This man literally committed one of the worst mass shootings in American history and then supposedly went out and calmly surrendered himself. This is the same sort of behavior that we've noted with people like Sirhan Sirhan. This inability, really, to rationalize any sort of normal human emotion in response to such an act. And this is a, a key clue, an indicator to me, that we may be looking again, and I'm very serious when I say this, we may be looking again at a product of all of those CIA experiments in the 1950s and 60s that were connected with Operation Artichoke and MK Ultra for Mind Control, the Manchurian candidate to program an assassin to go out and do this sort of stuff and then disappear. The FBI, we are also told, had apparently issued some months previously or weeks previously warnings about some sort of incident occurring in the theater. And we have the peculiar fact that apparently, according to some investigators in the alternative media, we have apparently another anomaly in that the FBI showed up at the scene prior to the local Aurora police, which had a substation there in that mall. So that raises the suspicion meters. Now, the other problem is, how did, if he was not, if Holmes was not in the theater, how did he get in? There are witnesses that say an individual took a cell phone call, got up, and opened the door, and so on and so forth. Now, here's the point I'm really driving at here. Number one, the official story is collapsing, in my opinion, too quickly. We have too many trails leading too many places too fast. Let's go back and compare this for a moment to the JFK assassination and what happened there. The official story took literally over a year to publish with the Warren Report. It took from its publication in 1964 to the Garrison investigation in 1967 another two and a half years for the official story to begin to unravel. Now part of that is obviously due to the fact that news traveled much more slowly back then than it does now in the age of the Internet. But not that much more slowly. It was still an electronic media age. The story really didn't begin to unravel for at least a decade after that due to the diligence of, of some very persevering JFK assassination researchers. In this case, in the Batman murder case, we have a story that's unraveling within the same day that it's being reported. Now, folks, I think we are looking at some sort of elitist operation here. But the real operation is, in my opinion, connected to this point that the story is unraveling so quickly. And it's the same sort of, of psychological effect, I think, that is being aimed at, as was the case with the JFK murder. And that is the ability to carry out a cold-blooded murder to, to very plainly show a programmed assassin at work. And, and given Holmes's connections to neuroscience, given his connections, incidentally, to Riverside, California, and that's a connection that you should look deeply, deeply into because there are shady goings on in that area of California that my friend Walter Bosley has talked about in some of his research. The speed with which this operation is is unraveling and the holes in the cobbled together official story are beginning to be put together suggest to me that the operation was intended to have the official story unravel to emphasize again the helplessness of the american people before this all-powerful elite and that kind of indicates to me something else i want you to consider i want to leave you with this thought. If that be the case, then really it indicates an elite that is panicked, an elite that has to reinforce the meme of its omnipotence and omnicompetence in the public's eye, because they themselves are losing their grip on that power.
So I think this was a carefully calculated operation. I suspect, as a result of that interpretation of it, that we're going to see more anomalies emerge in the course of the unraveling of the official story. And we're going to see the placement within the alternative community of plants. We're going to see people emerging with stories that become progressively more bizarre. All right, so that's something to look forward to. And I suspect we're also going to see, as we've already been seeing, more copycat examples. All right, folks, that's it. News and views from the Nefarium for July 26, 2012. I hope to see everybody tomorrow in the vid chat, and we'll see you on the flip side, everybody. God bless.